Africa is one of the poorest and most underdeveloped regions on the planet. It also possesses vast natural resources. Africa is home to some of the youngest democracies in the world, nations that struggle with instability, corruption, and violence. In this landscape, it is often the military that serves as the instrument of institutional power and stability. What we are doing is embarking upon a course of action through sustained security engagement that shows that we are committed to, ha to helping Africans build the capacity that they say they want to have in order to provide for their own security. General Kip Ward leads U.S. Africa Command, DOD's newest combatant command, where the focus is Africa and only Africa. The purpose behind the command is reflected in our sustained engagement, reflected in our commitment to working with the African nations, both bilaterally as well as regionally, such that through their commitment to doing things to help bring about a more stable continent of Africa, but knowing that at this point in time, help is needed. AFRICOM has military activities with more than 30 of the 53 nations that make up Africa. These are events that the countries themselves have asked for. Our story will take us into three of these countries, two in East Africa, one in the South. We begin in the Republic of Uganda. Welcome to Exercise Natural Fire. One of the primary programs AFRICOM employs in building relationships are events like this. Natural Fire is one of the largest exercises to take place on the continent of Africa. These troops will be the size comes from participation. Besides the United States, there are five East African countries, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Kenya, and Uganda. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the land forces. Lieutenant General the, uh, Edward Katumba Womala, Commander Uganda Land Forces. He says the benefits from an event like this are shared by everyone. This also is a milestone in the efforts towards capacity building in our region, which would enable us to handle different situations as they emerge. Natural Fire is a 10-day event designed to challenge the nations on several levels, humanitarian and civic assistance, crisis response, and security. Yes, you call the rifle and you see, you cook again. Sergeant Major Abraham Rabo is in his element. You see again. After that, you clear. Rabo has been in the Kenyan army for 25 years and is happy to say he's been an arms expert for the last 12. I like to instruct. I like to be instructor. Yeah, I like it. This one is called. Each nation has its own signature weapon system. Here in Africa, many are a reflection of past colonial ties. One of the high points of the exercise is the chance to try them all. To get to this point, Just you shoot. You aim somewhere. they start here. Yes. Are you happy? We are very happy to come to the Uganda to see the natural fire from the different parts of the countries of East African community, to work together, to see what is going on, the way the USA help us. We are very happy. Yeah. I'm very happy. Happiness in East Africa is relative. This region of the continent has known its fair share of violence. Border disputes, tribal conflicts, armed resistance, they've seen them all. Natural Fire offers training in guns, hand-to-hand -hand combat, convoy ops, and vehicle searches. Security skills that are important. I'm very impressed with the eagerness uh, to learn uh, of all the participants. Major General William Garrett commands U.S. Army Africa, the driving force behind natural fire. USRF is AFRICOM's land forces component. Garrett is exercise director. And I think General Kayamba would, uh, would echo that, uh, that feeling. Brigadier General Silver Moses Kayemba is Exercise Deputy Director and Deputy Training and Operations Commander, Uganda People's Defense Force. This, is, this shows you that once you have a focus, you just get serious and you'll get what you want. Got it? You turn, go! 
Some 650 East African soldiers and just over 500 U.S. troops are working hard at sharpening their professional skills. And then you'll also close the door. It's called building capacity. This is all part of capacity building, all part of helping our friends and partners increase their ability to solve issues and problems on, on the continent. On the African continent, Uganda is said to be the geographical heart. It's a landlocked country, recognized as the origin of the Nile River. Uganda has been an independent nation since 1962 and is successfully emerging from its bloody past. The district of Kitkum where most of the training exercise takes place, is only recently recovering from decades of vicious treatment at the hands of the LRA, Lord's Resistance Army, a rebel faction known for child fighters and brutal massacres of civilians, including children. Refugee camps are still home to many. It's exam week at Kitkum High School. The students have traveled for miles to be here. The school itself is also soon to graduate. We have a lot of help with the partner nations. It really wouldn't have been done this fast if we wouldn't have had that help. As the story goes, this auditorium and dining area were extensively damaged over the last 20 years by LRA forces. It's a fact of great pride that throughout it all, the school stayed open. Anything to do with schools. I've, I've done probably six different schools in you know, six different countries in Africa. And it's, it's, to me, it's more fulfilling than anything else. For their future. Her name is Ellen. Her children go to school I here. I think that they, 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 they study and get to work so that they help me in future. Her dream for the future is getting closer. In 10 days' time, the school roof will be repaired. It will have different paint, fresh tile, and 1,100 newly cut panes of glass. 30 miles away, the Museveni Primary School is literally being built from the ground up. If we finish, it'll be good. Captain Thompson is one of four civil engineers with the Rwandan Army. If we are together, we have the power. It's a hard body. We, we must work very hard to build our countries. The more that the countries of Africa can help themselves, the more capable they are in responding to their own problems, then uh, over time we hope they need us and, and other donors less often. Jerry Lanier is U.S. Ambassador to Uganda and former advisor to AFRICOM. He knows Africa. We get something like 15 to 20 percent of our imported oil now from Africa. We've seen other countries moving into Africa in a big commercial way, particularly the Chinese. We see Africa growing in importance economically and politically. Exercises like natural fire, yes. how important are they to a nation like Uganda? The East African community is seeking uh, greater integration, greater internal cooperation, and natural fire will enable us to help them in that goal by bringing together troops from those countries and enabling them to work together to meet common problems. Communication is key. This exercise has helped to show us that there is quite a lot that needs to be done. One big problem for all of East Africa is how to collectively respond to a disaster. And I think this is the first time that all the stakeholders have come together. Anthony Sabidi is with the World Food Program and is participating in the natural fire crisis response. Very important for us and for uh, everyone who is in uh, this area. The scenario calls for a killer flu pandemic across East Africa. Millions are at risk. Millions more are on the run. Every nation in the world is going to struggle from a pandemic. And that's not going to exclude anyone. Um, so. Our goal is to make sure that we all have that ability to build that capacity and to respond. You're born to bring polio to, to the country. It's a tabletop exercise, a simulation, a demonstration of how a collective force working together against a common enemy yeah. is good for and, all. Uh, some vaccinations are in stages. You could have received one stage. The other, in the when we get a month. pandemic, it's going to be worldwide. And the impact that it could cause here in East Africa could be catastrophic, considering some of the diseases that already exist here in the region.